All right, welcome everyone to For Flight for Europe Power Users. This is the follow-up course to uh, the webinar we put on last week, which was the For Flight for Europe Fundamentals. And this one will cover some of the same topics, but generally at a higher uh, or more advanced level. And so we'll look at a number of uh, ways to plan flights, such as VFR flights, but then turn to more advanced features like planning IFR flights, using a uh, route advisor, and various other more advanced features. The presenter today will be Wolfgang Oestreich. He is the European Pilot Support Team Manager, and so he is very well acquainted with the app, of course, and he uh, travels all over Europe meeting many different uh, flight clubs and teaching them about ForeFlight, so he is uh, uh, certainly used to uh, teaching the app. Just a few um, ground rules to go over, not rules, but uh, just some housekeeping items, really. You can ask questions via the GoToWebinar message panel on the right. You just click that little uh, question mark button inside the, uh, the circle there, and it expands the, uh, the message panel, and you can ask us any questions that way. We will be responding to questions throughout the webinar. We have a team of support staff that'll be doing that. And occasionally, Wolfgang will also take some breaks to answer a number of uh, helpful questions out loud. At the, at the very end of the webinar, uh, after we finish it, there'll be a very short survey, just three questions. So if you wouldn't mind taking just 30 seconds to respond to those, uh, it helps us know how we're doing and how we can improve and what you all would like to see on future webinars. This webinar is being recorded. And so we, uh, you'll receive an email with a link to view the recording or share it with other people. And you can always visit our forflight.com slash on frequency page to access recordings of any of the webinars we've done. So with that, I will turn it over to Wolfgang. Yeah, let's get started. So hello and thank you for joining. This presentation uh, provides a deeper insight into some forflight features and shows how you can optimize your flight planning. We start with a more advanced aircraft configuration and continue with VFR and IFR flight planning by covering advisors, briefing tools, and flight plan file. After demonstrating options for using charts in ForeFlight, we stick around in-flight weather and traffic information for Europe, talk about mark positions, and many things more. If you have just started this for flight or are looking for some basic information, please check our pilot's guide or watch the for flights for Europe fundamentals webinar on www.forflight.com slash on frequency. You can look videos on the website or you can ask our pilot support team. We'll begin with setting up an aircraft in for flight. The ForeFlight mobile app is an extreme powerful tool and can support you during each stage of a flight. Configuring your specific aircraft in the right way is essential for proper performance and fuel calculation and for Eurocontrol valid route generation. Done correctly, ForeFlight can be the cheapest multifunction display available for your aircraft. For the advanced aircraft setup, we start on ForeFlight Web. Sign in to your ForeFlight account by clicking the login button at www.forflight.com and then click on the aircraft menu item to view all of the configured aircrafts on your account. Create a new aircraft from scratch by tapping the new account aircraft button. The menu on the left side can be narrowed by clicking on the gilmet in the top left corner of the screen. The general section includes basic information about your aircraft, like the tail number, aircraft color, and the home airport. After putting in the tail number DM1, we step forward with searching for the correct aircraft type. The aircraft type is used for fighting flight plans. Tap aircraft type, then enter the aircraft model or make in the search box. Scroll through the list to find the correct aircraft type, then tap that entry to set it as your aircraft's type code. The four flight performance profiles are available for subscribers with the performance plan. These profiles are built based on the vendor's aircraft flight manuals 
and allow the performance calculation for each weight, temperature and altitude. Takeoff and landing performance calculations are included for more than 260 types of piston and turboprop aircraft. If your aircraft is not listed with a four-flight performance profile, please send us the aircraft manual as a PDF document to team at fourflight.com. When your aircraft's performance is differing from the POH numbers, you can select the profile and adjust the cruise speed or fuel consumption using the bio sliders. To set a particular performance profile as a default for that aircraft, tap Make Default on the top right corner of the screen. As a Basic Plus or Pro Plus subscriber, or if your aircraft is not listed with a four-flight performance profile, you can add a custom annual profile. Subscribers have the option, to, or all subscribers have the option to add a basic profile. You can create as many profiles as you wish for each aircraft, but only one profile will be used for a particular flight. Name the profile. Then at minimum, enter the true airspeed and fuel burn. For more accurate performance calculations, also enter the climb and descent true airspeed, fuel burn and rate of climb or descent. When you finish entering the information, tap the Back to Aircraft button to go back to the performance profile menu. Performance Plus subscribers have the option to build a by altitude profile for the aircraft. These allow you to input detailed performance data for every altitude in your aircraft operational range. After entering the required climb and descent model information, enter values in the cruise model table. Only the lowest and the highest altitude are required. And with Windows, you can enter values in whatever interval you prefer, such as every 10,000, 5,000 or 1,000 feet. ForeFlight uses a linear scale to calculate performance for altitudes you don't fill in. So filling in the values for more altitudes will provide more accurate performance results. After saving the by altitude profile, you can use it for flight planning on the web or in the mobile app, just like with any other profile. ForeFlight also provides unit conversions for weight and fuel. After selecting kilograms as a weight unit, all weight values in the profile can be converted. The other option is changing only the units. The unit for fuel consumption can be changed between gallons per hour, liters per hour, pounds per hour, and kilograms per hour. The values for startup, taxi, and takeoff, total or free serve or reserve has to be entered as absolute numbers. Mistakenly entering a value as gallons per hour instead of the total number of gallons burned during start, taxi and takeoff, may result in extremely high fuel burn values for the trip. Be careful with that. The value conversation is also available for fuel uh, uh, consumption. The filing section in your aircraft profile includes the IKEA equipment entries required to file a flight plan. Please check the correct settings for your aircraft avionics. The internet provides lists for some aircraft types with full configuration details about IKEA equipment, IKEA surveillance, and performance-based navigation settings. Later, we will talk about traffic information for flight. Providing ADS-B out is not mandatory for smaller aircraft in Europe. But adding that capability 
to your aircraft helps other pilots to see your aircraft earlier and avoids mid-air collisions. More values for the field 18 of the ICAO flight plan form can be entered in the other filing information section. Please check out the ICAO filing quick reference in the four flight drive of documents for more information. After setting up the aircraft, we continue with an example of VFR flight planning on the iPad. The aeronautical layer in the map view of the ForeFlight mobile app contains the Jeppesen, IFR, and VFR navigation data for Europe. Tapping on a point in the map opens a pop up window showing the air spaces on that selected point and the frequencies for flight information or radar services. Because the aircraft uh, airspace structure in many European regions is really complex and looks crowded, pilots are looking for optional add on charts. After purchasing, these chart options can be reached via the layer selector on the top left corner of the screen. Only a few countries provide free VFR maps. These can be found in the Europe VFR layer and contain the VFR maps for Iceland, the Faroe Islands, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Italy. Please check www.forflight.com slash Europe slash data for more information. Many chart options are available for France. For example, the government charts provided by EGN. Acceptance of the disclaimer is required when accessing the add-on chart the first time. The add-on charts are raster charts in which, in contrast to the aeronautical layer, all information is permanently entered. So if you prefer using the classic style for navigation and flying, ForeFlight is providing many options for you. The visual 500 charts provided by the German DFS cover parts of France as well, similar to the Rogers data add-on charts. The largest European coverage of, um, for VFR is provided by Air Million. This provider and also Carter Bossi, another provider specialized on the French airspace, provide weekend charts. by removing the military training areas typically unused on weekends. The fastest way to create a flight in the maps view is via the search line. Type in the departure and destination airport and you get a, uh, the direct route. If you want to learn more about the available options, please scroll down in the list. For example, if you get a routing from another source, you only have to paste that routing into the search line, press enter and the route is accepted. We select now the direct between Chamblay and saint Florentin. The route line is drawn on the map and editing the route can start. To demonstrate the full capabilities of the aeronautical layer, we open the layer selector again and switch the aeronautical layer on and the Katabossi charts off. Enabling the graphical node terms provide graphical information about active restricted areas. Tapping on the map opens a pop up window showing the specific NOTAM information for that region. Active restricted areas are shown on the map two hours in advance in orange and from the activation time in red. The route planning continues with selecting the best altitude for the flight in the FPL window. 
tapping the displayed altitudes opens the altitude advisor. The altitude advisor shows the moderate wind aloft at various altitudes and resulting en route time and fuel burn. That works for all subscription levels and requires at least a basic aircraft performance profile. Tailwind over the route is shown in green, while headwind is shown in red. If you have entered your aircraft's climb performance, the altitude advisor will automatically calculate whether it's possible to reach the listed altitude based on your aircraft's rate of climb and the distance of the route. I select the en route altitude of 2,500 feet. The lower left side of the FPL window shows automatically the adjusted performance numbers. Now we start with map decluttering by selecting the map settings and opening the airspace section. This section provides several options. Automatic area space highlighting highlights airspace that the planned route will intersect based on the selected aircraft's climb, cruise, and descent profile, or the current in-flight track. Airspace within an altitude of plus minus 1000 feet of the planned altitude and within a one nautical mile corridor of your planned route of flight is highlighted while other airspace along the route is visible but dimmed to reduce clutter. Tap the Hide Airspace Above option to select whether airspace of a, above a certain altitude in feet is hidden. Values of 500 or more are treated as feet, values below 500 are treated as flight level. Putting in 44 is expanded to 4,400 feet, and all airspaces beginning in 4,500 feet are now hidden. If you climb en route to within 1,000 feet of a hidden airspace along your route, the hidden airspace will automatically be displayed. The height airspace above value is also shown in the reminder box in the lower right corner of the maps page. You can adjust the value also by tapping on that label. From the Air Yong and Katabossi add-on charts, we know that training areas are mostly inactive over the weekend in France. From that reason, I switch the special use area military operating area button in the custom air spice section off and these areas are hidden. Tapping anywhere in the map closes the setting window. The map shows now all airspaces intersected by the route, and we can start to edit the route line by zooming into the first section. Tap and hold the route until a blue circle appears and draw the route line outside the area with airspace delta beginning in 3000 feet. When releasing, a pop-up window appears, showing you a selection of waypoints, nav aids, airports, sorted in ascending distance, also with the airway overlay layer switched off. You can simply tap onto the coordinates of the selected point to insert it into the route, or tapping on more. That provides the option to save the selected point as a user waypoint. The coordinates of the selected point are used as a waypoint name by default, but you can enter an own name from at least three characters without spaces. Please don't use waypoint names similar to existing navigation waypoints. After saving the waypoint, automatically the user waypoint map layer is switched on and the user waypoints become visible on the map. When drawing the route line now again in that area, the custom user waypoint appears in the waypoint list and can be selected for inserting him to the route stream.
the FPL window shows now the user waypoint name in the root string with its name. And you can use the search line to find the custom user waypoint later by putting in the waypoint name. Using the rubber bending method, I've created the final route for that VFR flight. As you can see, the route avoids areas active by NOTEM and also the delta airspace and controlled area of the Saint Dizier airport. For showing the difference to the classic view, I enabled the EGN charts as well. I can think you can see clearly the difference. The functions of the aeronautical layer are recognizing your planned route and current path when in flight and adjust the displayed airspaces. If you plan to store your planned route as a favorite route, open the FPL window again and tap the star icon on the lower right. Per default, the route name contains the ICAO codes for departure and destination airport, but defining an own name is possible as well. To view and recall a favorite or recent route, tap the star clock icon in the dark blue toolbar at the top of the maps view, and a list of favorite and recent route appears. Tap a recent or favorite route to make it the active route. That works as well when you have accidentally changed an active routing and want to restore the previous one. The previous route can be found on the recent. Features and functions of the foreflight are also available when in flight. Turning south after departure from Chamblay and approaching the delta airspace of Monsi will highlight that airspace. When back on the planned route, the airspace will be dimmed again. Foreflight provides not only information when approaching airspace, but also warnings when approaching obstacles or terrain. The Hazard Advisor is a terrain-based map, colored red or yellow, based on the terrain height relative to your aircraft's position and can be enabled in the layer selector as a map overlay. Terrain and obstacle between 1,000 and 100 feet are shown in yellow and red if higher. Tap the gear button right of the profile view to choose a different total corridor width and choose a hazard altitude to select the relative altitudes from the aircraft to terrain and obstacle warnings for the profile view and the hazard advisor. The hazard advisor requires a pro or performance subscription plan. A visual and acoustic alert can be enabled for terrain and obstacle warnings in the app settings. When putting the word alert into the search line, you can scroll down and find the alert section of the app settings and jump directly there. The terrain obstacle alerts detects and warns of threatening obstacle and terrain using visual and audio alerts that display app wide, not just in the maps view. Tap the full screen button and ForeFlight will automatically jump to your position on the maps view with the hazard advisor layer enabled. Hazard altitudes and obstacles are also shown within the uh, synthetic vision. Now let's do some IFR plan planning. My favorite personal tool when planning and VFR flight, uh, an IFR flight, sorry, is my iPhone. Tap and hold the foreflight icon and you can immediately start with a new flight 
get the nearest airport information or jump to the maps view or the logbook. The all flight data are automatically synchronized between your iPhone, iPad and ForeFlight web. Finally, it doesn't matter which tool you use for plan. For a new flight, tap the plus button for generating. Starting with a 12.3 release, performance plan subscribers can decide if they want to use the estimated time of departure or arrival for planning. Select the ETA toggle and for flight will work backwards to calculate your required departure time to arrive at that estimated time of arrival. Define date and time of your flight. And select a departure airport and destination airport. Based on your per time preference and route, the resulting performance data are automatically calculated and displayed on top of the screen. Tap in the alternate field to open the alternate advisor. The alternate advisor generates a list of suggested possible alternate airports based on a number of criteria such as uh, time and fuel requirements. To reach the alternate, forecast weather in conditions, available approach procedures, and whether you have previously selected that airport as an alternate on flights with the same destination. Be sure to check the alternate minimums for the selected airport before filing. Select an airport and add this airport as your alternate for the flight. The automated checks show within the uh, red banner that the planned power setting for that flight consumes too much fuel. We change the performance profile to 65% best economy setting and the error disappears. Below the small window is a route section. You can edit the route manually or use a route advisor for route generation. For any route that passes through the Eurocontrol airspace, the route advisor will evaluate the route against Eurocontrol's complex system of route constraints and display a Eurocontrol valid or Eurocontrol invalid label beneath the route. Click the routes button to open the route advisor, which displays a list of potential routes that you can select for a pair of departure and destination airports. To the right of the list is a route preview showing the path of every route on an interactive map. Tap a route in the list to highlight it on the map. You can pan and zoom around the route preview map and tap the zoom to route button in the bottom left to return to a view of the full route. Tap select route to add the selected route to the route editor that will replace any route that is already there. Recommended routes, available for performance plans, provides the best route based on your aircraft and time and fuel settings. Eurocontrol routes are routes provided by the Eurocontrol system for a given city pair. The route advisor will also show if the route is a Yankee or Zulu route. If needed, you can specify constraints to include or exclude any waypoint from your route and avoid any FIR. Tap the Constraints button in the upper right or the constraints listed to specify the waypoint to include or to avoid or the FIRs to avoid. Here you can also set the minimum or maximum altitude you want to use for route planning. When changing the flight rule to a Zulu or a Yankee plan, you get the option 
for adding your preferred IFR pickup and console waypoints. For our example, I enter Kobi as the preferred pickup point and going back for flight, the routing engine is calculating an Eurocontrol valid route with an IFR part starting at Kobi. After selecting that route and accepting, ForeFlight is asking for adjusting the route altitude. I suggest accepting that advice if your aircraft is able to fly that altitude. In practice, ATC asks you in many cases during the IFR pickup for your planned level. Performance plan subscribers can use the 3D button to preview the planned route and procedures before the flight in a realistic 3D view for a briefing. That feature gives the option to change between a cockpit view or third person view in your flight. Jump to a specific waypoint in the planned route using the navlog on the upper right side. After the route generation, performance plan subscribers can add the planned payload by tapping the number of persons on board with an average weight. We add three persons and 50 pounds of baggage, resulting in a total payload of 530 pounds. Now, Performance plan subscribers can define their fuel policy. Several fuel policies are provided for different planning options. As a private pilot, I prefer to fly with maximum fuel. Using that policy, ForeFlight calculates the maximum possible amount of fuel you can carry for that specific flight given the payload and the maximum ramp and takeoff rate. Now you can check the weight limits and optional, you can select a fixed base operator. If available, the fuel prices are shown. For more information, you can click the details button. After selecting the FBO, you can directly call or email them or send the address to the Apple Google or Google Map application for ground navigation. While connected to the internet, use PEC to supplement your downloads by running a pre-flight check to ensure you have the information you need for a trip downloaded into your device for offline use during the flight. PAC analyzes your route on the maps or flights view by looking at a corridor of 50 nautical miles width and 100 nautical miles in diameter around your departure and destination airports. PAC will download charts and plates for any states that fall inside the boundaries of these corridors. If you have a Pro Plus or Performance Plus uh, subscription, PAC will download forecast data for the icing, turbulence, and surface analysis layer. To review your flight documents, scroll up to the top of the screen. Tap the NAVLOG button to view a detailed NAVLOG, including leg times, winds, and fuel burns. Winds at altitudes above and below your plant's altitude or frequencies for the airports and selected FBOs. The NAVLOG can be printed or emailed. NAVLOGs generated on the web will automatically become available on mobile devices and vice versa as part of ForeFlight Sync system. Pilots using a performance plan can also select an international template that some operators may prefer for international flights. While viewing the NAVLOG, tap the gear button and select the desired template. It includes additional space for note-taking, including ATIS, clearance, 
as well as in-flight actuals and remarks. Tap the briefing button to request the ForeFlight briefing. The fresh generated briefing package contains a vertical cross-section chart showing icing, turbulence, wind and temperature for the planet route, followed by the wind, temperature and turbulence map for the plant level provided by the World Aeronautical Forecast Center in London, SIGMED charts, and then meter and area forecast for the departure, destination, alternate and en route airports. The next page shows airport segments if available. And finally, the briefing package has all NOTAMs beginning by airport NOTAMs, followed by NOTAM, en route NOTAMs and NOTAMs for the flight information regions. Subscribers having a ForeFlight performance plan can now attach files, documents, and photos to a flight plan for easy in-flight access and improved organization. Tap the Files button on top of flight and plus to attach files with the camera or iPhone photos. You can also import files from via AirDrop, drag and drop from apps and in the slide overview. Or you can attach scratch pads from the scratch pad view. Here, for example, an ATIS template. Tap the Send To button to the top right of the screen and select Attach to Flights. Now select one or several flights where you want to add the scratch pad and tap on Select Flight Plans. You get a confirmation and one file is now shown in the file section. File supports images, PDFs, Microsoft Office files, text and CSV files and many more. You can annotate attached files by viewing them in flights, rename an open file by tapping the edit button or send the file to other apps using the send to button. Files added to a flight are synchronized between all of your mobile devices, so you can access them from your iPad or iPhone. Integrated takeoff and landing performance calculations are now included in performance plans. The calculation incorporates aircraft performance and weather data as well as a pilot entered safety factor to calculate important flight metrics such as takeoff roll, climb speed and more to help pilots ensure they are within the aircraft's and runway limits. Takeoff and landing performance calculations available for over 260 popular piston and single NG turboprop aircraft with more planned in the future. ForeFlight has automatically recognized the weather conditions for the planned flight based on the area forecast and suggests a runway for you. Now select the runway surface conditions and depending on the manufacturer's manual, there are several options to choose from. If the vendor's menu doesn't provide calculations for some runway conditions, or if your aircraft's performance doesn't meet the POH numbers, you can add a safety factor to the calculation. The safety factor can reach from 1 to 10. The weather conditions can be overwritten if there is no forecast available. Finally, you get a complete takeoff performance calculation based on the specific weight for that flight, weather and performance calculation for your aircraft. The same is available for landing performance calculations. When you have finished the flight plan, tap the Proceed to File button to file a plan. So now file plan and file plan. You can add a call sign to your flight plan by entering the 
call sign field. If no call sign is entered, the flight plan will be filed under the aircraft's tail number. A copy of the flight plan and the briefing package will be sent to the address in the email field at the bottom of the filing form. You can enter multiple comma-separated email addresses to send the flight plan information to fellow pilots or crew members. When adding your phone number, please enter the complete country code. You get text messages on your phone about calculated takeoff slot times and more. A formatted PDF of your ICAO flight plan form can be created by tapping the Send To button at the top right. The ICAO flight plan form can be shared via AirDrop, email, print, or other available options. Tap the Save to Four Flight Documents to save a copy of the flight plan form to the imported drive in the document suite. From here, you can add it to whichever binder you choose or to the flight documents. After reviewing the data, the data tap on File and confirm the message. The flight plan will either be accepted and you will be notified of a successful file or it will be rejected and ForeFlight Mobile will identify the error. If rejected, you can correct the error and refile. Besides the in-app notification, ForeFlight sends email with the ATC acknowledgement and the briefing for the flight. Once a flight plan has been filed, it will no longer be editable, but it can be amended. For example, if the departure time is changing, you can bring the flight backward or forward. In practice, it's the best thing to plan a flight with the earliest possible departure time and move the flight backward if required. The reason is that the Euro control system is not able to bring a flight in front. Technically, in the background, the old plan is cancelled and a new plan is filed. That means you will lose your slot of the calculated takeoff time. Bringing a flight backward works by keeping your slot. The amending act, uh, function works also for other parts of the plan, like number of persons on board or available fuel. After applying the changes, tap on Mand, copy the changes, recheck the data, and refile the plan. A notification is sent via in-app message and via email as well. Cancellation of a plan is possible on the same way. Tap on Cancel, confirm that you really want to cancel the plan, and you get a notification. Filing a flight plan requires an internet connection via Wi-Fi or cellular network. ForeFlight supports IFR, Yankee and Zulu flight plans within and between the Eurocontrol member states and VFR flight plans within these countries other than the Netherlands, Italy, Poland, Romania and Slovakia. Please check our website for updates. When filing a VFR flight plan in these countries, ForeFlight will generate a PDF file containing the flight plan details and send it to you via email. You can also use the Send To button to transfer your flight plan from the flight's view to your panel avionics by tapping Panel in the Send To menu. Flight sharing allows you to easily share a read-only copy of your planned and filed flights with fellow pilots and is available for all four flight subscription plans. The other option is to send the plan to the map. Now let's go flying. The flight plan editor was already used for planning the VFR flight. 
tap the NavLog selector to show the real-time NavLog. The navigation log displays each leg of the route with course or heading, if winds or loft are available for your route, distance, fuel burn, and time statistics. The table listing shows the start and end point for each leg, the totals for the route and the leg, and the ETA. The colored dots show the current weather conditions at that position. Tap on a waypoint ID in the table to jump to that specific airport in the map. Or tap the arrow button to adjust the route to any leg or direct to a waypoint on that leg. When in flight, the remaining and ETR columns are updated in real time based on the current GPS position and ground speed. The distance remaining on the leg estimated time en route for the leg and estimated time of arrival at the next waypoint are displayed. The instrument panel shows a number of flight relevant information. To show or hide the instrument pedal, tap the instrument button on top of the screen. When a position fix is available, the instruments in the instrument panel at the bottom of the map update to reflect the latest value for ground speed, track, and geometrical uh, MSL altitude. The default instrument displayed in the instrument panel can be replaced with an instrument of your choice by tapping an instrument and selecting a new one from the pop-up list. The select instrument pop-up displays all available instruments. Be sure to scroll the list up and down to see each instrument. The list provides a description of each instrument's function, as well as indication of which one are already displayed. Height maximum elevation figure, available for pro and performance plants, show a dynamic maximum elevation figure for a half degree latitude by a half degree longitude box centered on your aircraft's location when moving at 40 knots or faster. The maximum elevation figure is calculated as the tallest obstacle or terrain in that box rounded up to the nearest 200 feet. Instrument flying means processing of procedures. Depending on the airports in the planned route, these are standard instrument departures arrivals and approaches. The procedure button in the top right of the flight plan edit view opens the procedure advisor, allowing you to add or replace arrival procedures, departure procedures, approaches, VFR traffic patterns, and search and rescue patterns in the route. Tap approach to see the available approaches for the destination airport. If a current meter is available, the runways with the most favorable winds are highlighted in the list. If a NOTAM affects an available runway, a red tag is displayed. The inset map can be panned and pitch zoomed so as you can see the details of the selected procedure. Also like VOR runway 17. And the procedure. After defining your initial approach fix, select Add to Route. The procedure is added to the route string, and for Pro and Performance Plans subscribers, there's a chart displayed as a map overlay. The free available Euro control charts are included in all subscription plans. Optional Jeppesen approach procedure charts can be added to the ForeFlight subscription or are linked from an existing JEPView license. Once an approach has been added to the route, you can perform several actions by tapping the green approach bubble in the route editor and choosing the desired action. Change between approaches or initial approach fixes by tapping change approach or change initial approach fix. Or you can tap activate vector to final to plot a direct to route 
from their present position to a point three nautical miles outside the final approach fix. Tap the 3D procedure preview to see a 3D preview of the approach, including the initial approach fix, intermediate fixes, and final approach fix. The NAVLOG in the 3D procedure preview includes any altitude and speed restrictions included in the approach. As in the 3D preview, you can virtually fly the approach to brief the procedure. You can also select waypoints in the NAVLOG to jump to that specific waypoint in this procedure. Pilots are using procedure shards on different ways. Some options are now demonstrated. After adding a chart to the map using the procedure advisor, you can manage a chart by tapping on the chart. Once you have displayed an approach plate or airport diagram on the map, you can change or hide it by tapping on the plate itself or display set, uh, to display the set pop-up. You can see the selected plate and you can scroll through the list of available plates or selected different one. Turn invert plate colors on for easier viewing in low light situations. You can use the slider to adjust the transparency of the plate on the map. You can, uh, after tapping full screen, that opens the plate in the plates page. When in full screen view, you can add the chart to a binder using the add to binder button on top of the screen. Or you can tap the plus add plate thumbnail to display an intelligent list of airports gathered from the airport view, the route loaded in the maps view, or the selected flight in the flight step of the ForeFlight Mobile. Tap an airport to see the available plates, Jefferson in front, then the ForeFlight, and then the Eurocontrol uh, charts, and tap the procedure you want to add. For reordering or deleting plates in the binder, tap the Add Edit button on the top left slide of the toolbar. Then hold and drag the plate to the new location. Tapping on the chart shows it in a full screen view. Here is an example, the newly added text information from the Jeppesen Mobile Flight Deck BFR. Changing between charts is easy using the three fingers gesture and swiping over the screen. You can swipe forward and backward. If a relevant NOTAM exists for that airport, you will be notified by a red banner on top of the chart. Tap on that banner to get the NOTAM information displayed. Charts can be sent back to the map or printed. If you intend to print all charts in a binder, please use the print icon on top of the binder screen. Select your print options and then it's done. Tapping on the clock icon opens a list with recently used plates for fast access. Tapping on the gear icon allows to adjust the screen brightness or invert all plates in the binders. Sometimes it happens that you want to remember your current position during the flight in order to make notes or you re re reuse it later. That feature is called marked positions. 
Mark positions are available in performance plans and let you drop a green pin position marker at any point along your flight. After enabling, mark positions in the map settings and the mark positions icon appears on the left side on the map. Tap the pin button to mark your current position. Each position marker includes the current time, GPS coordinates, altitude and speed and you can name the point and add additional notes if needed. If you don't enter a name, the marker name shown on the map page is the time when the marker was dropped. Markers will be added uh, to a track log, recorded using your, during the flight, and can also be viewed in a flight whose estimated time of departure and flight duration span the time when the marker was dropped. Tap on marked positions to see and edit a list of stored positions during that flight. You can select a single position and edit it and mark and make own notes. The whole list can be exported from the flight as an KML or CSV file. I want to use this example to demonstrate files and flights again. After storing as a, VS, a CSV file on the iPad, you can go to Files, select Add Files, the location, and select the CSV file and add it to the flight. Now you can tap on the CSV file and voila, you see the list of marked positions with their timestamps, notes and other stored information. Mark positions are also shown in the small window in flights. Tap on the map to open the uh, or enlarge the map and zoom in. After tapping a marked position, you can see and edit the information. Mark positions are also visible in the track logs for the recorded flight. Track logs can be enabled for either manual or automatic recording. When automatic recording is enabled, a new track log is started as soon as the app detects the say takeoff, which corresponds with a certain speed of th threshold. A new track log can also be started at any speed by tapping the record button in the map screen. Tap more track logs to see a list of the available track logs. Each log entry shows the date it was recorded, the length of the recording, the GPS source, and the aircraft's tail number, if it has been entered or automatically captured from ADS-B out. If the track log was used to create a logbook entry, a small book icon is shown next to the name of the device that recorded the track log. You can search track logs by departure, destination, aircraft, GPS source, and device name. Tap a track log to open the graphical track log view. The graphical track log view is a full screen interactive view of a safe track log. The top of the graphical view shows a map of the track log that can be panned and zoomed. The bottom shows a timeline based graph with selectable information, including altitude, speed, and if your track log was recorded with an IHRIS capable device like a sentry, pitch and bank. Two combinations are selectable at a time. Tap the info button to open a pop-up window where you can view and edit additional information about the track log, including a more descriptive name, the pilot's name, the tail number and notes. If ForeFlight detects ADS-B out capability for your aircraft, it would be automatically capture the tail number and add it to the track log. Marked positions made during that flight are shown at the end of the list. 
and can be selected in the map of the recorded flight. If you have a performance plan, tap the 3D button to open a 3D review of a track log. Here's an example of a 3D view of a steep turn exercise during a check ride. Switch between the first position and third position views using the buttons in the lower left of the screen and use one finger to pan the view and two fingers to pin zoom. When flying cross country, it's useful to have current in flight weather information available. The pack loads some data before the flight, but decision making during the flight to avoid weather isn't possible. The radar layer and all other lay weather layers are working as long as you have an internet connection. Because ADSB in flight weather isn't available in Europe, ForeFlight is working with other companies for bringing the weather data into your cockpit. The company Golds Engineering developed an iridium based system and provide models with added LTE connection or ADSB traffic capabilities. As soon as your iPad is connected to a supported device, it's displayed under More and Devices in the ForeFlight mobile app. For more information about all supported devices, please check the pilot's guide, our website or ask your pilot support team. Because the GOLTSA device requires an own ADL Connect app running on your device, you have to bring your planned route to that application. Select Send to and then Clipboard and change over to the LD Connect app. This app is automatically recognizing the route in your cache and you can import that route. Then go to the download page. Here you have the option for a single time download or an automatic download, what is refreshing the data each 15 minutes. After returning to ForeFlight, you can switch the radar layer on and the radar information is updated automatically. Tapping on the time step in the upper left corner of the map shows the date and time when the displayed information was updated. We zoom into the route for watching the thunderstorms southwest of Rheims. When the weather information is aging, the timestamp is changing into yellow or red. You get a notification when new data are downloaded and the radar information on the map is updated. The GOLD system provides more information like cloud tops or lightning. A full legend can be found inside the ADL Connect application. ForeFlight Mobile can display ADSB and FLAM traffic information for a number of supported portable and installed receivers. ForeFlight Mobile provides an extension of the industry standard GDL90 data interface specification for third party devices to transmit live ADSB, traffic information, HRS, device name, and GPS data to ForeFlight Mobile. FLAM traffic information can be delivered via the NMEA and the GDL90 protocol. An adapter, which is typically Wi-Fi, is required to convert the NMEA data into a format that can be received by the iPad. Viewing FLAM traffic from an EUAvionics Sky Echo 2 device in ForeFlight Mobile requires an app-specific FLAM decoding license which can be purchased as an add-on to your uh, ForeFlight subscription plan. When enabled, you can see the traffic in your area sending out ADSB or FLAM information, Mode Sierra, Mode Charlie, or traffic without transponder signal stays invisible. So please keep the traffic information as an add-on 
to the primary see and avoid tactics during the flight. ForeFlight can issue alerts when another aircraft passes within 1.8 nautical miles horizontally and plus minus 1,200 feet vertically of your aircraft's position. A traffic pop-up will be displayed if your aircraft is moving at over 40 knots and an ADS-B traffic target comes within that distance. The pop-up includes clock direction relative to your aircraft's current track and relative altitude information to help you locate the target more quickly. If ForeFlight detects that your aircraft is equipped with ADS-B out, an audio alert will also be issued with the same information as a visual pop-up. If no ADS-B out is detected, you will not receive traffic audio alerts. Traffic alerts can also be shown in synthetic vision. Synthetic vision shows also the opposite traffic. When traffic comes close to the icon, will turn into yellow or red. ForeFlight Mobile provides a number of in-app audio and visual alerts, but helps to keep you aware of potential hazards and improve your situational awareness in flight and on the ground. Alerts appear in red or beige rectangles in the upper third of the screen and persist for several seconds and can be dismissed by tapping on them. Audio alerts can be sent via Bluetooth to your headset or a Bluetooth capable audio panel. ForeFlight Mobile has a visual and audio alert system that triggers when you taxi near or onto a runway. This system uses GPS and geographic runway safety areas to alert you as you approach or enter a runway environment. This feature is available for all uh, ForeFlight subscribers. Up and entering the runway itself, the system will provide an entered alert, which includes the name of the runway and the length of the runway remaining. If the aircraft is not clearly at one particular end of the runway, the system will alert with both runway end names and will not include the length remaining. The transition altitude alert provides an audio and visual callout when you climb or descend through the local transition altitude. Destination weather frequency callout provides you with your destination ATIS information. The run by final approach alert triggers when you're lined up with towards a runway, even if the airport isn't in your route. That means your actual track is within plus minus 15 degree of the runway heading and you are descending. The 500 feet above ground line alert is a simple call out what triggers when you descend through 500 feet after having above 1000 feet above ground line. If your Air, um, iPad or iPhone is equipped with a barometric pressure sensor or it is connected to an external device that provides that capability, such a ForeFlight Sentry or Garmin FlightStream device. ForeFlight will monitor your cabin's pressure altitude and provide alerts when you pass 12,000 or 25,000 feet. Alerts can be individually enabled under more settings and alerts in ForeFlight Mobile. Terrain and obstacle alerts are switched off by default. One of the most underrated features in ForeFlight is a checklist function. Checklist is included with all individual subscription plans. The app includes checklist templates for a variety of fixed wing and select all, um, rotorcraft models, all derived from pilot operating handbooks. The templates can be customized as needed to fit your particular aircraft and include easy access to normal, abnormal, and emergency checklists. Four flight checklists let you complete a checklist with a series of tabs 
and offers an option to speak the challenge or challenge response. Landing gear handle position, down. Control wheel lock, remove. Ignition switch, off. Master switch, on. Fuel indicators, check quantity. That can be paused and resumed. Fuel indicators, check quantity. Landing gear down indicator light, green. Master switch, off. Fuel shoot off bell, on. Baggage door, secure. Checklist complete. Checklist preserves your progress and location in a checklist if you tap away to another part of the app and returns you right where you left off when you tap back into the checklist. Checklist can be shared with other pilots via email. That's it for the presentation part. And now let's continue with answering some questions. If you want to learn more, please read the pilot's guide online or in the app in the uh, ForeFlight Drive of documents. You can watch the um, presentations on forflight.com slash on frequency, or you can contact our pilot support team. So, What is the best way to get a graphical briefing of no terms along the route for my VFR flight? So the best way at the moment is to switch on the uh, no term uh, map overlay as we have demonstrated in the first part of this presentation. Then you can see all the graphical no terms. You can see in gray airspace or obstacle no terms. In orange, you see training areas or uh, restricted areas before they become active, and in red, active uh, restricted areas. Then, then the best practice is to send the flight, also if you have planned it on the map, to the flights view and generate the briefing package. The briefing package will include all uh, notems, also if they are not graphical uh, shown on the map. Um, can you remind me from what level of subscription the root advisor is available? The root advisor is available for all subscription levels. The only difference is that the Performance Plus subscribers get a more accurate uh, route generated based on the specific aircraft profile. If I buy JEP coverage, are the charts available on each device covered by my ForeFlight subscription? Yes. If you buy the JEPISON charts via their ForeFlight coverage, uh, via your ForeFlight subscription, and the JEPISON charts are on, available on all devices, that means two iPads, one iPhone for individual uh, pilots, or one iPad, one iPhone for business licenses. Where do I find VFR procedures for my destination airport? So there are several things. Uh, the aeronautical map layer contains the VFR procedures for destination airports and show the traffic patterns, uh, the VFR arrival and the departure routes. And you can also tap the airport and search for um, visual procedures. Here it depends what country you are flying in because uh, VFR procedure charts are not free available for some countries. So for example, in France, you have the VFR procedure charts available. In Switzerland, Austria, Germany, you have to purchase them. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, that's correct. Is it possible to send the flight plan to a G1000? So uh, it's possible to send the flight plan to a Garmin system having a flight stream 210 or 510. How can I include a standard um, arrival routes into the route? Okay, that's a very specific, question with an um, 
special spe, special um, procedure and uh, I suggest uh, sending that question to our pilot support team team at forflight.com so because that needs uh, some more um, uh, recognizing. What do we need to apply for show traffic in Europe? So you need a um, device that could be a fixed and for installed device, uh, as you have seen on the screen, that is uh, from Air Avionics, the AT1. That is a device delivering ADSB and FLAM traffic information, or you can have portable devices from different vendors. Uh, that could be a Garmin GDL50 device, that could be the Sky Echo, um, yeah, the ForeFlight Sentry. So you have to uh, look for the device and the capabilities. Um, so some devices are providing FLAM and ADSB capabilities. Some devices are only providing ADSB capabilities. For the Sky Echo 2, uh, it's required to purchase a FLAM license. So one second. Okay, so I think that's it for today. Um, yeah, thank you for watching and have a good evening. Thank you, bye. Thank you, Wolfgang. Uh, just a quick reminder to everyone that uh, we will have a survey just after this, so please uh, hold on uh, for just another minute or so uh, as I close out this webinar. Um, it looked like we were uh, able to answer most of the questions that came in, but there are several that we have not answered. So if you didn't get one of your questions answered, please, please, please send an email to that uh, that address at the very bottom that you can see on the screen, team at fourfly.com. Uh, that's where all of our uh, support team is available and they will definitely get back to you with a, a good answer to your question. Uh, lastly, uh, make sure to go to the fourfly.com slash on frequency uh, website page and there you can register for future webinars and starting sometime tomorrow you will see uh, the recording of this webinar available on that page. So thanks again everyone and we'll see you on the next webinar.